Inside the Circle, Season 9, Episode 5. High five! Yay! Sean, if it's not evident to the masses, we are on location. And you know how they should know that? Look at this fresh gear. Look at this. I got Licking Heights. <laughs> Licking Heights gear. Coach Price said, come here, I got something for you. I thought maybe, you know, maybe a fist, maybe a, a throat punch for the follow your man kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I didn't know what he was going to say. He said, look at this right here. And he hooked us right up. Look at this bad boy. Oh, come Robert on. Price definitely hooked up. Had shirts, stuff, everything for yes. us. I mean, I fit nicely in my medium. Medium. Good. <laughs> We're going medium here. <laughs> Extra medium. Woo. Sean, before we get to the Licking Heights tournament, which, by the way, was fantastic, I would love nothing more than to turn it over to you. You tell us where we're heading. Oh, let's start at the beginning of the week here. Would be okay. Wednesday. We had the state duels for Division One and Columbus. Yes. We had Dublin Kaufman taking on Westerville North and Marysville taking on Lancaster. Yes. And you were at uh, Dublin Kaufman broadcasting that. Dublin Kaufman got the better of them there. Maybe they did. 56 to 19, somewhere like that. But I think Westerville North is better than the uh, score indicated just because yeah. me and you talked at the beginning of the year. Even though we're halfway through the season, for Westville North, this is really only like their third event because yes. they talked about how Westville schools were shut down among other schools that were shut down, Marysville and so forth. So it's kind of like catch up until we get to where we're at. I expect a better product out of Westville North as we in go forward. Yeah. So because David Grant does a great job and that staff does of uh, you know, getting their guys to wrestle well at the end of the season. And I think yes. some of these schools are just going to play catch up until we get more into uh, late February. Or if there was one regret about that Wednesday night being there, it would I would love to have picked David Grant's brain about where he felt his team was and where he thought he could get them to type of deal. Because as you mentioned, they've only had three events, so it's nice to see them wrestling, yes. But they're not hitting on all cylinders yet. So. You know how we know they're moving in the right direction? No. Because we're going to tell these people in three or four months. Mm, yes, you're saying they're somewhere else. Well, yeah, they might okay. Be you want to expound a little bit on that, Marysville? Well, anyways, Dublin Coffin did end up winning, just re uh, ran at that, and Marysville ended up winning over the Gale. So both yes. those schools will advance to the state duels up to St. Ed's Word in February. Yes. But there were some OCC matches the following day as well. Boom. Probably, probably the most notable match of the matches would be Des Gartrell wrestling your boy Nap from yes. Old Page Orange. I know they're looked at as maybe the top two guys at that weight or at least somewhere in the yeah. discussion. And Gartrell came out on the top three to two in a very, uh, even though the score was low, I watched it. I thought it was very entertaining and they were yes. both being offensive. But when you're wrestling top people, their defense is good as well. So that's um, the way it goes. That's the way it goes sometimes. Certainly, any other OCC events that we can think of? We did. We had Old and Tangy Liberty travel to UA. They're both Ooh, both yeah. schools had some uh, guys out there, so we didn't get a true billing of both schools. But Liberty did come out on top, 37 to 30, and another nice. match that was extremely close as well. Now, is this? I gotta check my notes. Is this where we mentioned Shanklin? Right here, Shanklin. 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 Okay. Okay. Hey, don't ever say we didn't say your name. We missed it one time. All right. Um, Sean, that would have been Thursday. Are we fast forwarding to today? We will fast forward to today. Ooh, I'm sure there was a lot more wrestling than we have in uh, to talk about. However, we do have some events that I am very excited to talk about. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Well, we were at this. Do we want to start with this or do yeah, we want to start we'll, with that? We'll, we'll, finish up, we'll finish up here at Licking Heights. Okay, well, there was a quad at Westerville North featuring Westerville North, Thomas Worthington, Watkins Memorial, and Mount Gilead. Mm. Sean, I think the marquee match of that day was Westerville North versus Watkins Memorial is the first match of the day. Right, we had Westerville North ranked fourth in our, our yes. projections at the beginning of the season, coming off of Tough Law on Wednesday. And then we had the undefeating Warriors that we talked yes. about at the beginning of the year. These guys, you know, 10-0, 11-0 at this point. Yeah, and what were they, 6-7-8, somewhere Six, in seven, there? 6 7 yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you're, you're setting me up here. This I'm, sounds well, like I'm, an upset I'm, coming. Well, I'm kind of setting you up because as I alluded to people that I talked to off camera here, hmm. if you look at my rankings and the results, I mean, since I have Westville North, Four and I have walking seven. I mean, I would be pushing them with all my chips that four would win just because you're the one who ranked them. And you know what this is. Yeah, <laughs> this is easy for me. And that is what happened. Westerville North walks away your winner. I do believe they won 40 to 25. 40 to 31. I said 40 to 31. Okay. That's exactly what I said. And, and I don't know for a fact, but I would venture to say both teams probably had a kid out. Oh, they did have a kid? I would, I would right, venture right, to say, right. just the way we are right now, I doubt anybody's at 100% 100 
Maybe there's a team here or there, but for the most part, that sounded like an entertaining duel. Was there any uh, matches inside the duel? Yes, right there? funny you should mention that. 113 pounds, the report that I received Capper, Watkins Memorial, taking on Butcher from Westerville North. A battle of uh, both district qualifiers, but Butcher was a state qualifier, state qualifier last year. Watkins Memorial, Capper, walks away your 10-2 winner over Butcher. Well, that's a major. That is a major. You know, Mark, you told me at the beginning of the year that you really thought Capper was a guy that's probably not people Mark talking about because he yep. didn't have maybe the district that he wanted. I agree. And you're like, I really think this kid just laying on the radar is going to do good things later. I so, really felt he grew into the weight class, and he's at 13 this year. I bet he got up to 18, 20, maybe 21 this year, which before, his first two years, he was under 105. Uh -huh. And then last year, he was... Uh, he would have been 113. He might have been 113. Gotcha. Maybe. So, I mean, yeah. So now he's into the weight, and here he is. Awesome. So that's good. Uh, another weight uh, to Did watch. Do we count that as a win for you then? Do we break the streak with that? Yes, sir. Are you now one of my Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Sean, that would have been uh, Westerville North. What happened at Licking Heights today? Licking Heights, as I was telling Mark here, I actually wrestled in this tournament back 30 years ago. So did I. No, I said I wrestled and you participated. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> but anyways, I was telling Mark, like, I think me and Mark have came in this tournament to cover it for the last five, possibly six years. Yeah. And I cannot find a but better RAN tournament in the state than what Bo Ramsey and his family and staff do. Yes. I mean, if they say it's going to start at 9 o'clock, we are starting at 9 o'clock. That's absolutely correct. If it says yep. round two starts at 945. Starts at 945. Are, and you know how people say, like, we're going to take a 15 or 20 minute break. And yeah. We'll be back and it usually it's like an hour break. They said, we're taking a break until 1215. At 1215, we were wrestling. That's true. And they do a great job. And you know the crazy thing is. Crazy. You know, yeah. <laughs> they, we, we bring in our junior high team. We bring in our uh, JV guys. And you put them on the mat to, you know, be boppers or something like that. Runners. Didn't even need it. Didn't even need had adults at each three adults at each Ooh, table. That was great, big time. That's huge. So as you mentioned, and Bo Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A is the hospitality. Chick Fil A, I'm not a huge fan of Chick Fil A. Why did I see you in that box like you were like, like the ship was going but, down? Well, you know, when a man's hungry, any port in the storm. That's I all you gotta you, say. I think you even ate the cookie too. Oh, I ate that cookie. I was looking for the milkshake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm um, putting it on right there. Hey, Sean, let's talk about the wrestling that occurred. There was great wrestling. There here was. Today. There was. You know what? Maybe I, I don't want to say. I want to say great, but I'm so giddy to be at an individual tournament. Yes. Me and Mark aren't sitting through these duels. I mean, we're not against duels, but there's something about individual tournaments that you just see more excitement yeah. in the crowd and the yep. coaches and the kids. Yeah. No, I agree. Like you're that, working so. towards yes. the final two. You're working towards yeah. something. Now, this was had a little pool feel to it, so. You know. Mount Vernon did end up coming out on top as a champion there. London got second there with five champions. London? Five champions. They have high school wrestling? <laughs> London. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> what's, the name, what's the name of their coach? Coach Burns, and he's no, going to kill me. No, oh, you are supposed <laughs> to say like uh, John Oh, dang, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. I didn't even know they had a team. Yeah, yeah. He likes to be under the radar, he folks. He does like to be under the radar. But that, that ain't happening, not with his kids. London had five champions. Five champs. 13, 45, 60, 220, and heavyweight. <sighs> So that's a great job Man, by them. And all five of those guys know how to wrestle. Dude, those Burns boys are good. You know another team I was impressed with that maybe could have been up a little bit higher is the sales. Oh, they brought it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Had they have four hammers three, there, three, man. Four, who, yeah. who do they have there? They have Owens, Lopez, yes. Egan. Egan, Rush, yes. Shulal. I mean, yes. they're really building back to something. I mean, it takes it's, it, it, it take, uh, take some time. It takes some time to get there, but I like what I'm seeing in year maybe three of uh, Lance the, Palmer, or Lance Palmer, Colin, Palmer. Colin Palmer being there and Coach uh, Monday. So. Most certainly. Hey, you mentioned, you just mentioned one of them right there. Um, 120 pounds, Egan. Was able to up in district two time district qualifier plants, and he also up ended. Uh, was it hmm, who else would he did he beat Spurgeon? No, Spurgeon beat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that was a I mean, listen to those names Spurgeon. That was a great way. I'm telling you, that was a hey, great way. Watch out for 120 this year at Darby. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. 120, 120 Darby district. 120. Apparently, it's going to be pretty good. 120 is going to be a really <laughs> tough way. Well, if you had to list the top three weights at Darby. <laughs> what would they be? 120, 120, and 120. Well, let's ask the golden question I don't think we've asked for 10 months. Go. Did the homeschool have a champion? 
You know what, the home school did not have a champ, but they did come up with a runner up at 145, lost to the London kid who is tough. Joel, if I think his name is, or Kennedy, maybe Josiah Kennedy. Um, yes, tough. Josiah Kennedy. Ryan Wan walks away uh, your runner up for at 145 pounds. He's a returning district qualifier, really doing good this year, so I'm looking for big things out of him. Yeah, some other matches within the matches here is Talk Zach, to me. Zach Lopez. Yes. From DeSales, up in state qualifier Palmer from uh, Westland in overtime. Overtime. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 26, 26 overtime. Tiebreaker two. That's what it was. Which would be considered overtime. I guess. Hey, quick point of note. Did you know this? There was actually injury time left over. There was? Yes. So we were wrong saying that all the injury time was That's correct. Okay. There was actually injury time left, and I think it was like a second. Okay. At so 220, we talked about London winning at 220, but it was really... Three guys went four and one. Yes. We had your boy from uh, Central Crossing. Gar Garache. Garache. I tried. And Gabe Harmon from Mount Vernon. Yes. So all these guys, but I think the criteria, whatever, the who had the most pins, who had the most yes. pins to fall, something yeah. like went that. Went down to criteria seven. Seven. Eight. Ooh, we hate eight. criteria, don't we, here in America? So. Yeah. Sean, uh, anything else that we need to, I mean, let's talk, well, you're going to mention Marion Franklin, or Marion Franklin, Mount Vernon. I was. No, I'm just going to say that. Gabe Harmon, they're 220 Gabe Harmon, uh, uh, Fireball. Gabe, and Sh Gabe Shannon won at Shannon, 128. 38. As Mark talked about, uh, our boy at 120. 120, uh, Spurgeon. Yes, yeah, so uh, great showing. Where are they going to be next week? Great question. They are going to be at Newark Catholic, which will also include Dublin Sciota. Yes. As well as Thomas Worthington? No. Westville Central. Westville Central, Reynoldsburg. And obviously, Newark Catholic. Obviously. So, but there's also going to be wrestling at Jonathan Alder. Woo! We got some wrestling going on at Jonathan Alder Let's there. Let's go! Jonathan Alder's tough, man. They, they are, are tough. tough. They are tough. That's going to be a good. London's going to be there. Ooh. Oh, that would be a maybe, great maybe, event. Maybe, maybe. Okay, no maybe problem. I could write this down wrong. We're on location, but I know yeah. Weston will be there. And yes, they will. Westland, Let's you know, talk Weston. Let's talk Weston today. You know, we talked about the four big guns they had, both Jude Boys, Palmer, and Hurley. But another guy that might be the guy that could get him in the top ten at Darby is... Mullins here at yes. 95. He got second to Shuloff. Obviously, that's no disgrace in yeah. what's the matter because Shuloff is very good. But Mullins really starts to look the part. 195, a guy that could really score some points for them there. He, You know what Mullins is to me? A guy who stuck it out and committed to get better. That's it. If you looked at him four years ago, you think, well, he's not bad. He's not great, but he's not bad. You know, But here he is sticking it out, and his body's changed. It looks good. Well, I think yeah. one thing about Westland is that their four guys were all wrestling their way today. Yes. Both Jews were 6 and 13. Palmer was at 26 and Hurley was at 52. And the reason yes. why I say that is in this broken up year, those guys certified last week and next week they're wrestling the same weight. It's hard to maintain your weight when you don't have these events and it seems like they're doing a great job. I still think people are sleeping, up, sleeping on Trent Jude. I mean, he's a junior, state alternate at 13, coming down to 6. I keep telling people, I think, man, I think people are overlooking this guy and I think they're just not giving him the credit that they should. If he's going to be dangerous out Who there. Who are these and, people? Um, you know, as long as he's running. That's right. Running and getting that. Keep running, keeping that cardio up. Keeping that cardio up and getting that condition there. And he's going to be a very, very entertaining tough out at Derby here. True that. So. Sean, are we uh, going over the. We are not. Not going over the top ten. Not, That's not a whiteboard. Sorry. When we are here on location, <laughs> things really come together it's extremely quickly. We're yeah. trying to get out of the tournament. We're trying to write down stuff. We're trying to get information from other yep. tournaments that happen, results. So basically, we just want to get out there and tell you what was going on the following week and give some recognition to these guys and to uh, Licky Heights for inviting us out here. Most doing certainly. An incredible job running a individual tournament. Most certainly. Sean, is that all you got for episode five? I believe so. It was a short one just to give you. Oh, okay. I do want to give a shout out to one of the biggest fans of ITC, Stephanie Fesco of Groveport. Let's go. It's her birthday this weekend. Go Cruisers. And she is celebrating it down at Hocking Hills oh. with her boyfriend. Nice. I love Hocking so, Hills. So happy birthday. Maybe she might even get an ITC shirt. She, we I mean, have home. Some that left over. might be the first time we've given it to a fan. Might be. Ooh. Usually have to win the uh, yeah. ITC Pick'ems Contest. Which is going to be a debacle this year. No one has, you know, tournaments to go on. That's, That's going to be true. crazy. Or you have to be have a good uh, 
wrestler of the week or something, right? Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. She's one of the first, but she's a huge fan. Okay, and like that has case. all of our videos downloading computer just in case the world crashes. She still has them there. Has the lampshades. The, nice, the iPhone cover. All of it. Well, good. So happy Sean. birthday! Have a great time down there. Yes, happy birthday! And now you are inside the circle.